What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about an easy way to add trim and molding to your models using the extension Profile Builder. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So first off, I apologize if I sound a little bit rough. I've got a little bit of a throat thing going on right now. So uh, hopefully that'll be better by tomorrow. And so we've talked about Profile Builder before. It's basically an extension designed to help you create smart profiles in SketchUp um, that basically um, can extrude along pads. They can add like intermediate framing, other things like that. Uh, it can be a massive time saver. But in today's video, I want to talk about one of the uses that I find most useful for this tool, which is creating like uh, creating like trim and base and other things like that. Okay, and so there's really two sets of tools in Profile Builder that we've talked about. There's the ability to create profiles and there's the ability to create assemblies. So profiles are basically the profiles or the shapes that you can extrude along a path, while assemblies are kind of combinations of different profiles, right? So the assemblies are things like uh, things like these walls and these railings that automatically fill things in, other things like that. So if I was to, so if I was to pick one of the railings over here, for example, Right, it's gonna take this rail and it's gonna kind of automatically create that and fill these in. So that's a very powerful function of Profile Builder, but in today's video, we are gonna focus more on the actual profiles. And this can actually be really valuable because not only is it a powerful way to create profiles, it's also a powerful way to manage your groups of profiles. So what we wanna do is let's start off and let's just add some base to this space. Well, there are base profiles included along with Profile Builder. So when you first open this up, you can just click on the button right here for the little uh, samples folder. And you can see how, like for example, we've got some base in here. And so if we click on the base, what that's gonna do is that's going to generate base in our space. So we can either click on the build function right here and click along points and then just hit the enter key when you're done you can use this in order to create that profile and so we can use this built-in base profile or you can create your own custom profiles and so let's say for example that we wanted a new form of base and i'm actually just going to download a collection of wood base profiles off of the 3d warehouse and so we're just going to look for trim profile and notice how there's multiple different um, sets of trim profiles in here. I think I'm actually going to use this uh, John Mansfield timber profiles um, and that is from John O M. So you can just take that and download it directly into your SketchUp model. So we're going to bring this in like this and notice what he's done is he's come in here and he's created profiles um, along this wood base piece. And so what that means is that means that we can use these profiles in order to create our own base. And so let's say that we wanted a fresh profile. So what we're gonna do, and we might need to explode this, yeah, so that we can get into the individual profiles in here. But what I wanna do is I wanna select one of these profiles, so maybe this one right here. I'm just gonna click the plus button, and we're just gonna call this base dash M356 and click on OK. And so when we do that, notice what that does is that creates a base profile right here. Now we've got a little bit of a problem, right? Um, it is pretty cool how it actually brings in like the perimeter of that, but if we were to try to run this right now, right? So we're gonna click in here, do this. Notice how it's gonna place that base profile up against the wall and it's facing the wrong direction and it has the wrong base point. So. What I wanna do is I just wanna adjust this. Notice this red point right here. This is showing you how the base is going to be inserted. And so in this case, right, cause I clicked on this point, notice how it placed this profile based on this central point. I don't necessarily want that. I want this to be based on the bottom right, right? So if I come in here and I make this adjustment and then I click on this, you can click on this button down here to edit the properties and we're going to adjust the placement point and click on edit. And notice how this object moves so that now this is inserted based on this base point. However, it's still facing the wrong direction. So we can just click on this button right here to reverse it. And then we can edit the mirror as well. And now this piece of base is facing the correct direction. Okay, so then we could just come in here and we can just add this profile really quickly like this. Then I'm gonna hit the enter key and then I'm gonna do the same thing over here in order to add 
my bass. And so note that we can use this for more than just bass. We can also use this for like crown molding. So let's say I wanted to add some crown molding around the outside of the space like this. Notice how we've got options to do that over here. And in this case, I'm just going to select maybe this one right here. So we're just gonna click on the plus button. We're just gonna call this one crown molding M56. We're gonna click on okay. And again, in this case, we wanna do the opposite, right? We don't want the lower right corner, we want the upper right corner. So we're gonna to go to top right like this. Well then, and we're also gonna to wanna to mirror it. Well then, we can come in here and we can add this crown molding just like this to our space. And so one of the cool things about this is this also gives you the ability to save your profiles. So what you can do is you can create your own user library of profiles. So say I wanted to access this again in the future, I can click on the save button. And usually I recommend creating your own profile builder profiles folder where you can put your uh, custom profiles. But in this case, I'm just gonna create a new one and I'm just gonna call it wood trim. And we're just gonna save that profile in here. And why don't we do the same thing with this one? So we'll just save this like this. Well now, if we go find that folder, right, like this, you can see all of the items in that folder. So you could save like a whole library of wood trim in here. And so one of the really powerful things about Profile Builder um, that makes it better than like the Follow Me tool is um, Profile Builder gives you the ability to create profiles along something that isn't a continuous path, right? So the Follow Me tool, for example, if you wanted to extrude in order to create trim along these edges on the roof, that would be a little bit frustrating because you would have to come in here and do it multiple times because otherwise you would get an error that says that this path is not a continuous path. Um, what we want to do is we want to add trim all along this object, basically along this grid on our ceiling. And so to do that, what we can do is we're going to pick a trim type. So let's say we were to pick this M17. We're just going to add this and we're just going to call this trim-m17. Click on OK. And what we want to do in this case is we want to set our insertion point to the top middle right here. And then what we can do is we're just going to click in here and we're going to select our edges like this. And we're going to activate this tool for build a long path. And notice what that does is that comes in here and that'll build this and add our grid of trim using that custom trim profile that we brought in here without us having to do it multiple times or have a continuous path. And so one of the other cool things about this is these are also adjustable after the fact. So like if I wanted to make this bigger, for example, so instead of one and a half by seven eighths, let's say I wanted to make this three, I could type in a new value in here and then I can select these trim objects that this created, right? And I can come in here and I can edit those member properties and I can adjust the um, size attributes right here. Click on edit. Well, notice what that did is that came in here and that made that profile bigger. So you can also use this to come back in later and adjust your profiles if you need to do that. All right, so this is just one of a ton of different uses you can have for Profile Builder, but I find when I'm working with trim and other things like that, it can be a massive time saver. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you're using Profile Builder, if you've got anything to use it for. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.